Hello and welcome. My name is Freed and you are listening to Where's the Popcorn? This is part 10 of our 100 part series where I randomly choose a movie from IMDb's most definitive greatest films of all time list. And today we have been given number 16, Forrest Gump from 1994. Do you want a chocolate? I could eat about a million and a half of these. My mom always said life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Hey, two Tom Hanks flicks in a row. How about that? Now, it was based on the 1986 novel of the same name by Winston Groom. It was directed by Robert Zemeckis, who you might know from the Back to the Future trilogy. It stars Tom Hanks as Forrest Gump, Robin Wright as Jenny Curran, Gary Sinise as Lieutenant Dan Taylor, Sally Field as Mama Gump, and Michael T. Williamson as Benjamin Buford Blue, a.k.a. Bubba. I'm sure you can visualize all of these actors in these roles, but a fun thing to think about is that none of these actors were the first choice. None of them. For example, the author of the book that this movie was based on, Winston Groom, actually wanted John Goodman for the lead. Because in the novel, Forrest is 6'6", 240 pounds. So yeah, yeah, John Goodman makes sense. Other actors considered for other roles, and you may know some of these, but some of these I bet you don't. Bill Murray, Chevy Chase, and John Travolta were said to have turned down the role of Forrest Gump. For Jenny, the studio was considering Nicole Kidman, Jodie Foster, and Demi Moore. For Bubba, they actually asked Dave Chappelle uh, if he would do it, but he passed because he didn't think the movie would do very well. Ice Cube passed as well, and they also considered David Allen Greer for the role. And it was also said that Chris Rock, Eddie Murphy, and Martin Lawrence were also considered. This film was nominated for 13 Academy Awards, and it won six, including Best Picture, Best Actor in a Leading Role, which was the second in a row for Mr. Hanks, Best Director, Best Writing, Best Editing, and Best Visual Effects. Now, the Best Picture win, it just barely beat out the Shawshank Redemption. In fact, in 2015, a poll was taken asking the Academy members if they could vote again, what would they do? And the majority of them agreed that they would change their vote and give it to Shawshank. All right, well, grab yourself a mess of shrimp and 15 Dr. Peppers. Here we go. Action. We open on the iconic feather. Now, please don't ask me for an in-depth analysis on what I think it means. Everyone and their monkey seems to have a theory on the subject, and I just take it as like the briefcase from Pulp Fiction. Whatever you think is inside it, you're right. The feather is floating through the city of Savannah, Georgia, and lands tilted on a pair of filthy Nike shoes attached to a man on a bus stop bench. Now, that bench doesn't actually exist at that park. They put it there for the movie. The bench is now in the uh, Savannah Museum. I've actually been there. The owner of the soiled sneakers picks up the feather, opens his suitcase, and puts it square in the middle of what looks to be a very well-loved copy of Curious George by H.A. Ray. A fellow bus traveler sits on the bench, and the man introduces himself as Forrest Gump. And even while giving him the cold shoulder and nonverbal responses, he continues to engage, going on from chocolates to motherly wisdom to shoes. Actually, speaking of that famous Box O chocolates line, Hanks absolutely refuses to say that in public or in interviews. He keeps going, and through some flashbacks and voiceovers, we learn about this loquacious stranger's backstory. What? Oh wait, well, we know his name now. So I guess, you know, he's not a stranger anymore. Anyways, we learned about his spinal troubles, having an IQ of 75, and his mother willing to bend over backwards to see that he is well-educated. I actually looked up the average American IQ, and it's 98, with Alabama, which is the state this movie takes place in, at number 45 on the list. Mississippi was at the very bottom, in case you're curious. I would have looked up Greenbow, Alabama specifically, but that town doesn't exist. They just made it up for the movie. Anyways, he and his mother were essentially living in a B and B, and here we learn that he has met many people from many walks of life, including the future king of rock and roll, Elvis Aaron Presley, who is actually voiced by Kurt Russell here. Forrest and his mama are on their own, and I actually like the approach she takes when talking to her son. Now, most parents tell their progeny that they are special and different from others, and she says the complete opposite. It's actually weird like that, isn't it? Like, the most bland, basic, and boring people on the earth think there's some unique gift to the world, while the actual unique folks just want to be treated normally. Well, Forrest goes to school and we meet Jenna and get some of her backstory, which kind of explains a lot about her actions in the future. We fast forward to basically their adult characters and Forrest runs a lot. 
Tom Hanks' older brother actually did a lot of the running scenes because Tom couldn't apparently get the knees and elbows right. Forrest goes to university and gets caught up in his first real-life bit of American history, which was the integration of the University of Alabama in 1963. And his innocuous gesture of picking up a dropped book reinforced to us that he doesn't view the world from the same perspective as the masses. And this is the first time we see Forrest superimposed onto actual newsreels from the time. It's, it's pretty obvious that it's fake, but for the time, it's pretty well done. I mean, it won the Academy Award for it. Moving on, well, we have a football game here and a ruined bathrobe there, and Forrest graduates from university and was presented with the question that we have all had, and that is, well, what the hell do I do now? And literally, at his uni graduation, he's given a pamphlet with information about the military, and then off he goes. Now, I actually think I discovered a little bit of a Mandela effect going on here, because for some reason, I've always thought that he was drafted into the military, but he actually enlisted himself. On the bus to boot camp, we meet Forrest's future best good friend, Benjamin Buford Blue, a.k.a. Bubba, who informs us that he actually was drafted. Fun fact. The uh, the line, my name is Forrest Gump, people call me Forrest Gump, was actually non-scripted. That was completely ad-libbed by uh, Tom Hanks, and he did it one take, and the director loved it and kept it. Boot camp goes like every boot camp sequence in movies, yelling, PT, bunch of dudes in bunk beds. And then we learn that Forrest is being sent to Vietnam to serve as an infantryman. And it also turns out that Forrest and Bubba are being sent to the same place, so that's nice, I guess. Here we meet Lieutenant Dan Taylor, and we officially go to war. And then you're going to have to hit play and see for yourself if you haven't already. I mean, if you haven't seen Forrest Gump yet, like, what the hell are you doing with your life? Okay, well, it's time for my thoughts. Now, as much as I like to be a contrarian and dislike things that the majority of the world loves, this one I just can't deny, especially with a soundtrack like that. My lord, that's a good one. Not since The Crow has the movie had a soundtrack so perfect. I mean, this flick offers everything you could possibly want in a movie. We have humor, we have love, we have adventure, drama, relatability, history, rewatchability, and the list goes on. I mean, it's like a living Norman Rockwell painting. It's sort of like a PG-13 rated Tarantino flick in the sense that he takes actual pieces of history and sensationalizes them to fit a fictional narrative. Forrest is a grown man with the cognition of a child. And whereas most of us would see that as a deficit, I ask you to think about that for a second. What would it be like to not see the world through the biased, manipulated, cynical, anxious eyes that have come with living in this wildly divided and fear-mongering world? Hell, the supporting characters are the personification of some of those characteristics. I mean, Jenny represents the unpredictability and unreliability of life. Lieutenant Dan is the underlying anger and fear that comes with losing trust in a thing that was supposed to support you. Mama Gump is the security blanket that we all use to keep us from getting hurt too badly. And by the end, all those characters turn the page. They show us that change is possible, or they just, you know, die. But they turned the page before they died. All right, and rant. So my score for this film is an 8.5 out of 10. I highly recommend it. It's an American classic, and it always will be. And if for some crazy reason that you haven't seen this yet, do yourself a favor, carve out some time, and uh, have a watch. All right, well, again, my name is Freed, and thank you for listening. That was number 16 on IMDb's Greatest Films of All Time list. And stay tuned for the next one. I'll see you then. <laughs>